So here we go. This week, we're going to go into more detail on Coco Qua, which is a medium for growing cannabis. So, and lots of people use cocoa. I mean, it, I don't know. I used to hear, I don't think it's the case anymore, but I used to hear about it. It's like cocoa is the most popular medium for growing cannabis. Does anybody hear that back in the day? I think it dep <laughs> depends yeah. upon who you ask, probably, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's just a very easy medium, and though it, it, it looks like soil, but it's not soil, and it's considered a hydroponic medium, so you have to treat it a little bit differently than what you treat soil. So we're going to give a rundown of the different things that you have to do when you grow in cannabis in cocoa, you know, what kind of foods you want to feed it, what kind of uh, pH you're looking at, uh, just some tips and tricks on how to make the grow go smoothly. So, you know, just to... Uh, uh, maybe convince some people to try cocoa if you haven't tried cocoa before because it's a real fucking good medium and though soil is easy once you get your head around the numbers and shit and and learn how to grow with cocoa cocoa is like incredibly simple it's all growing by numbers as long as you keep on track of everything uh, cocoa is fucking beautiful and i recommend growing with cocoa for most new growers if you got the budget to buy the cocoa the food the ph and ec meter shit like that if you got the the budget to go and buy that equipment cocoa is the way to go for a new grower for sure so yeah, the reason on that would probably be because cocoa is easy to fix if you make a mistake mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like you know, in 24 hours you fix a problem in cocoa yeah and soil would take you days to, to, to slowly get your plant back on track cocoa is instantaneous fix you're done mm -hmm. So let's start off with the fucking the basics right at the beginning. What the fuck is cocoa? Marge, do you want to answer that question? You know what cocoa is? Uh, sort of. I've never actually used it myself. I right. know a lot of people have. GB was pretty into using cocoa all the time. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of his things. And you, monkey, don't you? You're a big mm -hmm. Absolutely. Leader. I'm dedicated to my cocoa. Right. I just coconut derived. Yeah, yeah but pretty much, yeah. It, it's the yeah. husk, and the husk of a uh, yeah. Coconut. It's the outer husk of the coconut. It's you get all the pith out. You want that fibrous stuff. Is the cocoa core? That's what we want. Mm -hmm. And it's soaked for like six months in salt water, and then it's uh, taken out and dried off. I think, and it's uh, brown then, and it all, it's all mashed up and shit. It looks it looks a little bit like soil. It's lighter than soil. Like it's not so dark brown. It's a lighter brown. And it's just a, uh, it's void of nutrients, so it doesn't have any nutrients in it whatsoever. So you can just add your own nutrients to it, and you know how much you're giving your plants all the time. But it's pretty much just the husk of coconuts. It's uh, it's uh, it used to be thrown away, you know. They'd make the coconuts, mm -hmm. they'd, they'd get the uh, coconut milk and shit, and then they'd just throw away the outer shell instead yeah. of using it. But now they uh, they they use that shit to make cocoa. So. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's great stuff because I mean it's like you said, nutrient void, but it's extremely hydrophilic into the uh, so it, it's easy to water. It loves to be wet, mm -hmm. and the magic with cocoa is that even when it's soaking wet, the wettest you can possibly get it, it's at the perfect combination of air and a moisture for your plant roots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know it's it's like the perfect uh, hydroponics on training wheels is a good way to put it. Yeah, for sure. No, it's just a real nice, easy medium to use, man. So you want to look out for specific brands. Now, in the UK, really, the one I recommend and the only one you should really use is uh, Canna. You know, Canna Cocoa Professional, it's called. And that shit is the shit. Because you can't just use coconut husk on its own. Because when you add nutrients to it, it starts to absorb the nutrients into the actual coconut husk and it doesn't get to your plants like you want it to be. So it has to be something called buffered before you use it to grow plants in. And it's usually soaked in a, a high calcium solution, like they put loads of cow mag in it, leave it to soak in there because then the cocoa will absorb all the calcium out of the water and it puts it into the cocoa itself so it doesn't uh leach it from your plant instead so it needs to be yeah. buffered first and you can do that yourself if you want to you can buffer the cocoa say if you've got the cheap stuff you can buy from wilkinson's here in the uk just cheap it's like a hard brick uh, and you can use that for like mushroom growing and shit as well it comes as a hard brick you soak it in some water and it expands out you don't want that stuff 
unless you're going to buffer it first. It's better to buy it in the bag because it's already made, then it's already ready to go. You can just stick it in a pot, stick a seed in it, and you can start using it. You can do it that way. Now, I actually buy the can of bricks myself. Okay. I, I, it's cheaper for me to get it shipped. It's uh, that kind yeah. of stuff. Mm -hmm, and, I, mm -hmm. and I don't mind buffering it. And the quality, I like the quality of the can of stuff. I've used other brands, and I, I'll pay a little bit extra for the can of bricks. So you use can of States. bricks then, yeah, right? I do. Do you I buffer them, that? I, I do buffer them. So how, how so, do you go about buffering? Because that would be an important thing to cover. Well, after you get your, you, you want to get your bricks, you want to wet them down and get them to expand. And then, first of all, you want to wash your, your, uh, your peat. Put it into, like, a colander with a hose stream and you're trying to wash any fine super fines that are in the cocoa out so you will wash a little bit of the fine dust out of it once you get it all washed and wet you're going to take this wet cocoa and you're going to submerge it in a solution of cow mag that is one and a half times as strong as the label tells you to mix it and you want to make sure that that your cocoa is completely submerged and you're going to leave it for about eight hours and after eight so hours, for example you're... when you say one and a half it'll probably say four milliliter per liter on the cocoa bottle so you'll use mm -hmm. six milliliter per liter instead that would, right that would be, be be correct you're going to use a heavier solution you want to provide your your cocoa with plenty plenty of the calcium and, and magnesium ions what you're trying to do is you're trying to drive Mackie had mentioned that salt water thing mm -hmm. well those sodium ions and those chlorine ions are still in your cocoa and you're trying to get that stuff out of there and the cow mag is going to actually free that stuff out saturate your cocoa with the good stuff and you'll be off to the races but yeah so mm -hmm. for about eight hours you're going to soak the cocoa in a, a one and a half strength solution one and one point five times strength of the manufacturer's label drain mm -hmm. that off and i actually like to double buffer it so i'll go back a second time and do it now i've done it i have grown <laughs> without double buffering and i didn't get burned but for safety's sake, I just feel more comfortable double buffering. You know, again as well, I mean, this sounds a little bit complex, but it really isn't. You're just leaving the brick no. to soak in some water with some calcium in it. And yeah. you don't even have to do this if you just buy it from the bag. You know, if you just get a 50 litre bag of Canna Cocoa Professional, this shit has already been done. And you only need to buffer the cocoa if you're reusing it after the grow. Because you can reuse it as well. You don't have to throw it away. You can just right. buffer it use it again for the next grow and you can keep using it and using it and using it so yeah, yeah we have a guide up on percy's on how to buffer cocos it's, mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. little it's a long topic to talk your way through the guide is good so you know jump over to percy's if you want to learn how to buffer cocoa mm -hmm. there's a, mm -hmm. a full guide over there just quick shout and out there to, free to read this week yeah it's free free this week only yeah <laughs> uh, quick shout out there to alistair alistair said uh love the show guys best podcast in the world for me that's sweet but he's got a dash. Looking forward to listening to the rest tomorrow at work. Thanks for the mention, Mackie. It means a lot. How did you know I was going to mention it? Yeah, it's fucking hell. You're freaking me out, bro. <laughs> but yeah, pleasure. Uh, glad you like the show, bro. Anyway, back to Coco. So you don't have to buffer it, but if you're using bricks, if you're buying bricks from Amazon, then do buffer it before you use it for cannabis plants because otherwise you're going to suffer calcium deficiencies and you don't want that. So if you can't get the canna cocoa professional is there any other brand you would recommend tg do, do you know of any brands in canada of cocoa uh no i don't really know much about anything cocoa wise uh, mm -hmm. in my the grocery store i go to i was just there yesterday there's a big i've never seen it it's called it says made from humble no right. from humble town maybe it's yeah it just says it comes from like humble county for some fucking reason which may or may not be a good thing you know like might be shitty stuff because there's you know just because it comes from humble doesn't mean it's good but mm -hmm. yeah uh there's there's bricks like you said uh here I've, I've looked at them and i am curious i'm just like i don't want to have to go buy a bunch of new shit um yeah yeah you should sorry, give it a shot to... man if you haven't grown in cocoa yeah. before tg you really gotta give it a shot man you'd enjoy it oh yeah like and like i said i just don't want to buy any nutrient bottles um, mm -hmm. if somebody wants to give me like a, a quick a b you know pk whatever the fuck little setup yeah i'll, I'll go ahead and, and fucking run it but uh yeah, I don't want to buy anything, but mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I am curious, like for sure, um, just because I've never done it before. So, so let's say then that the cocoa's buffered, or you've bought it in a bag, whichever one. Then mm -hmm. you're gonna get it. You're gonna put it in some pots. What size pots are you gonna be using? I mean, for me, when I used to grow in cocoa, then I would use just like a 500 milliliter pot, just a small one to get seedlings up and running and then it'll be transplanted a couple of times throughout the grow. But I wouldn't really go over. 12 liters 
So, right. so you don't right. need massive pots to be grown in cocoa. No, the biggest I'll use is 11 liters usually. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. I have put them in, in uh, five gallon pots just to see. Mm -hmm. Didn't see that much much improvement really by going to a five. But again, I'm, I'm in a small tent size. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can only let them go so far. Yeah, so I'd start at the half a liter. I'd go on to three liters, between three and five liters into the next pot. And then as the plant gets bigger, you know, I'd move on to the 12 liter. And I'd use air pots as well, you know, air pots. Mm -hmm. They're the plastic ones with all the bumps in, got holes in. Because the good thing about cocoa is you can get loads of air to the roots of the plant, and the plant likes air. So it's it's real light, fluffy stuff. You can stick shitloads of water into it. You won't overwater your plants in cocoa. The water will just pour out the bottom of the pot. It holds a certain amount, and it, loads of air will get to the roots. So you want to use like the fabric pots or the air pots so the whole lot of the root zone can get shitloads of air mm -hmm. to it. So. Oh, I like to use air pots. Check them out. They're real good, everybody. And you can mm -hmm. get them for a decent price nowadays. When they first came out, they weren't cheap. But yeah. they're good shit with them. Bubble Hawk couldn't be here this week, and he is a cocoa grower. And he, he grows a little bit different in cocoa. He does. He and I are very similar in our practices, but he likes to fill one plant in, in, in a 4 by 4 So he will right. plant in a mm -hmm. 5 or a 7, and he will actually push that plant with space. Mm -hmm. So if cocoa does have that advantage, too, uh, if you give the plant room to go, you can really let it let it run because cocoa will feed it just like, you know, mainline constant nutrients mm -hmm. right at it if, if you do it right. So well, it's you just can actually go big plants in it. Yeah, it's just when you're starting out because the cocoa doesn't have any nutrients in, like you said. So you're going to be adding the nutrients yourself. And the bigger the pot is, the more nutrients and water you're going to have to add to the pot when you're yeah. watering it. So if you're using a massive pot with a small plant, then it's just a waste of all the nutrients you're just pouring them through the cocoa and it's never going to get used by the roots but if the roots are big enough then you can use these you know if you're going to veg a plant for eight to ten weeks then you want it to be in a huge fucking pot you know but if you're just going to do a usual five six week veg and then flower it then 12 to 15 liter pots would be perfect for a plant that size you know when you're yeah. doing the four plants in a four by four the standard grow the 12 oh, to weird. 15 liter perfect yeah perfect size Definitely. But if you're going to do that one beast one, you know, then you're going to lay veg for a little bit longer. The roots are going to be bigger, so they're going to need more space. Then go for an even bigger pot. Man. Yeah, cocoa is very flexible. You can do just about mm -hmm. anything with it. I also grow micro grows in cocoa, which is great. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very flexible media. Because you can constantly water it. And this is the important thing with cocoa is that you can constantly water it. It's only going to hold a certain amount of water and the plants are always going to be able to get a nice amount of air to the roots. So you, over watering is pretty much impossible. As long as you're removing the runoff from where, every mm -hmm. time you feed, then you're going to be okay. So usually when you're growing in soil, because cocoa looks like soil, but it's different, it's hydroponics, you need to adjust the pH. You can't just water and hope everything's going to be okay. This is hydroponics, so you need to treat it as hydroponics. So the pH of cocoa needs to be around 5.8 during veg and you can push it up to 6.2 in the flowering period but 5.8 is perfect for cocoa while you're vegging plants mm -hmm. so and you're talking about you, you actually the feed that you're putting in there not actually the ph mm -hmm. of the media itself right well the ph of the medium will swing when it as the plant drinks water yes. and it evaporates and the salt you, you know the, the ph right. will fluctuate just a little bit but when you when you're mixing your nutrients up you know you're going to add your nutrients to water then you're going to check it to make sure that the pH is 5.8 and then you're going to feed it to the plant. And that will change the root zone to be the same pH as what the, the nutrient solution was, which you've watered it with, which will be around 5.8. But as it dries out, the pH will change a little bit. But you, this is why you water every day. It's important to never let your cocoa dry out because as the cocoa dries, it leaves the salts behind from the nutrients and that changes the pH of the medium if the ph goes off the plant isn't going to eat properly so always keep the cocoa damp and you can do that by watering every day or you can even set up an auto feeder and feed the plant for a minute or so every hour yeah there's lots of different ways you can do it with an auto feeder but as long as the cocoa remains wet at all times the plant's going to be happy right it's true that is it it just depends on how much nutrients you're going to put into the medium and did you want to cover that bit, Monkey? What nutrients do you use when you when you're growing? You use advanced, right? I use advanced nutrients. I use the Sensi Coco formula. I mean, some people love it, some people hate it. It works for me, so that's mm -hmm. what I'm using right now. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, the one thing in cocoa nutrients that I've found across the board is that every manufacturer, again, tells you to use too much of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So early on, uh, advanced nutrients would be pretty much like canna would be, which I know you were familiar with, was the canna cocoa nutrients. Well, I used but... to use the uh, advanced nutrients as well, but I found it was really salty because of that pH mm -hmm. perfect technology, you know, the... That right. uh, that makes it, it makes the EC much higher than what the plant's actually getting. So you might see that you're running at 1.8 EC, but realistically, the food that's available to the plant is only at like 1.0 EC. So you use a yeah. lot more because of that. I've not, uh, I've not had that problem because I'm, uh, of course, I'm mixing in rainwater and other things. Mm -hmm. Even the final EC that I'm feeding at with the advanced uh, cocoa formula is probably 1.2 i rarely go above that mm -hmm. and the plants are always just loving it yeah man um, just keeping it keeping it light down keep there. it light man. Yeah. the plant's happy ain't it <clears throat> but no matter which what uh, nutrients you use when you start off early with these nutrients feeding the cocoa uh, is as important as feeding the feeding the plants so uh you're having to use or, or, the nutrients that you should be using would be cow mag every time with cocoa some cow mag in, in your feed and then your your basic nutrients. I'm using an A and B. Some of it's an A, B, and a C. But those are your basic nutrients you're going to use. You're going to start at a quarter strength and just work it from there. And with mm -hmm. cocoa, you're going, you, you use meters that most efficiently to decide what your plants are going to need. And the one thing that you're going to want to have if you're growing in cocoa is an EC meter. And you're going to want to have a quality one that's going to give you consistent readings across the board because mm -hmm. this is how you're going to decide what you're going to feed and how much you're going to feed your plants. Mm -hmm. um, what you'll do is you start off at a quarter of a strength and you'll just start feeding, feeding your seedlings that you'll find that it'll do just fine. But after a few days of feeding that, when you get runoff, every time you feed your plant in cocoa, you want to get about 10 to 20% running off. You can put more than that if you want because you're not washing nutrients out of cocoa. There's no nutrients in it to wash out. Only, only nutrients are in the feed that you're putting in it. But you always want to get some runoff, like Mackie said, to get every, all the salts pulled out of everything like that. But after you get all that runoff, what you're going to do is take your EC meter and you, measure, you should have measured your feed before you started. And then you're going to measure it at the end when it runs out of the pot. There should be a difference between the two. Usually there is. Ideally, there won't be. But if you're finding that yeah. the solution is less concentrated coming out the pot, that means your plant's eating a lot and it needs to have more put in. So you'd bump up your, your, your nutrient level a tiny bit next feeding mm -hmm. and then read it again. And so what you're trying to do is balance. If, if you're feeding the same as it's coming out, that means you're, you're perfect, you're balanced. Your, your plant is eating exactly what you're giving it and it's not wasting anything. So, so, so let's say, for example, you're growing a seedling in cocoa. And it's yes. in the little 500 milliliter pot and you're mixing up mm -hmm. the food you put it you put the ph to 5.8 you check the ec mm -hmm. and the ec is at 0 0.6 right you're going to feed that to the plants in, in in the cocoa and then the next day you're going to do the same thing you're going to feed it exactly the same 0 0.6 ec and, and let's say for example that's a half a milliliter per liter of a and b right mm -hmm. you mix that in stir it up ph to 5.8 0 mm -hmm. 0.6 EC, and then you water the plant, get a little bit of runoff. Now, when you check that runoff, if it's two points underneath, so let's say the, the runoff EC now is 0 0.4, it means you're not feeding the plant enough. The plant's taking more out of the nutrient solution than you're giving it. So you want to bump it up by a couple of EC points. So, so next time, give it 0 0.8 and then water it through and check the EC afterwards after a couple of days. But then and if it's a... If it's equilibrium up sooner or later, mm -hmm. it'll balance. That's right. And if the runoff is coming out and it's saying 0 0.8 EC when you've been giving it 0 0.6, it means that you're feeding too much and the salt's being left behind. So mm -hmm. you want to feed a little bit less, drop the EC down to 0 0.5 next time you feed. And if you just keep doing that until the EC, just a, a, it can come out the same, but it's okay if it's one point either side, like 0 0.5, 0 0.7. You're just trying to find that that balance where it's got it's coming out the same as it went in, and that's when yeah. you've got a happy plant. Now I won't even make an adjustment to mine if unless it's uh, 0 0.2 difference. And you know, if the plant is is looking fine and not seeing any deficiencies, and it's within that 0.2. I'm mm -hmm. good with that, you know, and after that, I'll go ahead and tweak it. But you don't need to chase those numbers exactly like Mackie said, because if you do, mm -hmm. you'll be chasing forever. It's going to it's going to swing every yeah. time you yeah. measure it a little bit. Uh, That's OK. 
And let's kind right in the chat there said, I don't think an EC meter is essential. No, nothing's really essential. It's just nice to have. You know, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. If you're having problems with your plants, if the plant's looking ill, it's overfed, underfed, it's got deficiency, something's going on, then using your EC meter the way we've just recommended like that to check the, the EC going in and the EC coming out will make it a lot easier to diagnose what's going on with your plant and it'll make it a lot easier to fix the problem. So mm -hmm. if you can't afford it, because they're like 50, 60 quid for a decent one, don't go any less than that. You don't buy one for £10 from Amazon because it's not going to be accurate enough. It's going to fuck you over. You want a decent one. Blue Lab or Essentials is what we'd recommend. Get one of those EC meters. Oh, man, you would you would freak out if I told you how much I spent on an EC pen. <clears throat> I spent next to nothing, and it's, and it's accurate, dead accurate. So mm. you can find a good cheap one out there. They exist. Um, the most cons the most important thing on an EC meter, though, is not so much what the reading is. Is it is it accurate to a lab standard? Is it going to read exactly the same every time you check it? That, mm -hmm. That's what's important, and that's what I keep preaching. On. You, you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get these these fancy lab meters, but if you have one that's going to be within point one on, on on your testing, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not micro Siemens. This this is Siemens. Per square uh, centimeter not micros yeah. so if it's like point if it's within point one every time you've got a, an accurate enough meter to grow cannabis you don't need to have lab quality here and that's what's I important like, here sorry sorry tj i just want to say just about meters um make sure you learn how to calibrate mm -hmm. your meter mm -hmm. and oh. like properly calibrate it on a kind of a schedule you know every three months i do mine every th i don't even use mine i, I use mine just to like monitor the double check the yeah water. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just make sure I am very basic TDS and pH. I don't have an EC meter, but it is important to keep them. Working TDS is EC, bro. Well, yeah, it's the <laughs> same different side of the same coin kind of yeah. thing. You know? mm. But anyway, yeah. So uh, calibration, you know, using those buffering solutions and learning how to do that process properly is really, really important in terms of making sure that whatever you buy, whether it's a blue lab or a cheap one um, is actually yeah. reading properly. Mm -hmm. And so, consistency yeah. is very important yeah. when you're growing in cocoa. You know, if you're giving it 0 0.6 when you're feeding it, stick to that for a few yeah. days at least before you start changing things up. You know, yeah. in, where the EC meter comes in handy, like you said in the chat, that they were saying he didn't think it was necessary, is when things go tits up, that's when your EC meter is going to be your best friend because when mm -hmm. you start taking these readings, it'll put you onto the problem pretty quick. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you're guessing. That's right. You'll know straight away whether the plant's being underfed or overfed just by checking the runoff EC compared to the e compared to the EC of the nutrient solution going in. You know, mm. It's important. So, and doing that will get you through the whole cocoa grow. Even if you're just using A and B, just monitor the EC going in and coming out and the pH as well. And as, if it's hungry, feed it more. If it's being fed too much, feed it less. That'll get you through the whole grow. And then you, you could, when you get to the flowering stage, you know, you want to start adding some um, PK 13, 14, or, you know, some kind of PK booster. And that will, you know, you'll have to adjust things again then just to try and get the EC and everything balanced in the cocoa again. But it's really easy to do, man. And I know it sounds complex because of all of the ECs and the, the pH and all these different numbers. But after just a couple of days of working with it, you're going to understand what's going on. And it's, mm -hmm growing by numbers man you're just checking the numbers to see if everything's running okay and if everything's running okay just keep doing what you're doing and mm -hmm. there's just there's some things which people often overlook when they're growing in cocoa they're thinking for one that it's like soil where you can let it dry out you know you wet, the wet and dry cycle which is good when you're growing in soil you'd water the plants so the medium's all wet fully saturated and then you wait three days four days five days until the pot is light and you'll be lifting up the pot to check how much moisture is in it and when it gets light you water it again this is what happens when you grow in soil and it's not the same for cocoa well, cocoa is going to retain a certain amount of water and it won't hold too much so you need to water it every day because if that when that water starts evaporating out of it and leave the salts behind it raises the ph and it's going to start causing problems so water every day if you can when you've got the really small plants you know the seedlings just a couple of weeks old then you can get away with doing it every other day but to keep it happy when the plant's grown it's got a good well established root system then watering every day and keeping the cocoa moist at all times is important it is absolutely what else do we have to look over here 
uh, what nutrients to use. Yeah, I, I, I've used canna, just the canna uh, range, man, and it's really cheap. You know, it, it's here in the UK, it is anyway. I'm not sure what it's like in the USA because I think it's a UK company. But, you know, using canna cocoa with canna nutrients seems to make sense because canna, the, the company, is going to test their, their canna nutrients with their canna cocoa to see what works so they you know the, the tests have been done to make sure that these two things work together nicely so if you use the can of nutrients just can of a and b with some uh, pk 13 14 when the plants flowering in the can of cocoa is perfect and you can just get some vital link ph up and down to go with it and then some cow mag of your choosing and the cow mag will be used at different ratios depending on what your background ec is and the background ec is simply the ec of the water before you've added anything to it so just yeah, what we'll comes out the measure tap. of the purity are based mm -hmm. upon mostly calcium carbonate that's dissolved in your water so mm -hmm. good good stuff yeah yeah, and it's really yeah like becky said keep it simple especially if mm -hmm. you're starting with just buy the basic nutrients don't i mean you get you go to canada and they're going to have all the additives and all the fancy stuff in it in their list and on their schedule you don't need that mm -hmm. <clears throat> just kind of a and b and some pk 13 14 if you want to if you want to treat the plants when they're young then buy some rhizotonic as well because that, that will help the roots grow real nice but again that's not needed it's just it's a nice luxury to have if yeah. you if you just use can a and b you can get it from start to finish like to harvest time you don't even need to add the pk 13 14. it's nice to add that shit because the plant would appreciate it a lot more but you don't necessarily need it but, but get you it. will need yeah, get it. Mag. yeah you're going to need cow mm -hmm, mag and mm -hmm. cocoa by all means and that's it after like uh three or four weeks of growing into veg and the plant will start to look a little bit calcium deficient as well and it doesn't necessarily mean that the plants running out of calcium it might be running out of magnesium so what i used to like to do is spray the plants with some foliar feeding with uh some epsom salts one tablespoon no a third of a tablespoon of epsom salts to one liter of water and just foliar feed the plant and that will help get the can uh, the uh, calcium moved around the plant a, a little bit more. Uh, Twisted asked there, when do you give the PK 13, 14? When the flowers start to grow. I mean, people differ on their opinion there. Some people like to give it like a week after flip. But when I start to see flowers forming on the plant, then that's when I'm like, the plant needs potassium at this point, and that's when I'll start adding it because that that's, that's pretty it, much me too. That's how it builds Same the way. flowers, you know. And because it's cocoa, it's instantly available to the plant. It's not like in soil where you know organics, you need to wait for some time for it to become plant available. It's straight away available to the plant as soon as it's in the medium. The plants are going to be using it. So as soon as you see flowers start to grow, then start adding PK thirteen fourteen. And just do the checks with the EC. And if you're giving it too much, the plant's going to tell you. The, you know, the runoff's going to tell you. Just test that shit. Right. And even with the PK and with the cow mag, remember, start at one-fourth what they tell you on the bottle. Mm -hmm. You can always add more, but it's hard as heck to take it out of the plant once it's burned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. That's right. It's much easier to fix an underfed plant than it is to fix an overfed plant. So it's always better to feed under. Indeed. Uh, that's always a... Uh, a lot of people do overfeed their plant when they first start growing. They think the plant needs a lot more nutrients than it actually does. But if you just follow that the EC of the runoff versus the EC going in, then the yeah. plant will tell you if you're overfeeding or not. And this is a good yeah, thing uh, about cocoa. You don't get them same, same privileges in soil. I've yeah. never seen a manufacturer's feed chart that was, you know, in my opinion, accurate for mm -hmm. cannabis. They'll tell you that, to, I mean, some of these feed charts that I've been seeing are telling you to feed somewhere around 2.1, 2.4 in mid flower and cocoa. And I'm thinking, my gosh, the plant's going to be dead by then. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's too, it's, that's just way too much. Why do they do that? Why do they recommend such high amounts if it's so, so you'll buy more? No, no, it's, it's because cannabis <laughs> is a herb and it doesn't take a, these nutrient manufacturers. They're, they're thinking about people who are growing vegetables, you know, tomatoes and fucking mm -hmm. melons and shit. And they do take a lot more food. So they recommend these higher amounts. Cannabis is just a herbaceous plant. It doesn't take a lot of food to produce the fruits. So it, it, you, when you're using these nutrients that are made specifically for growing vegetables, it takes like a quarter of the amount they right. recommend on the bottle. Mm -hmm. It's just because they're designed for growing different things instead of cannabis. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Lee asked there as well, he asked a good question. How much water do you feed three gallon pot daily when it's mature? It's going to differ on the, on a few different things, man, but just water until you get in between 10 and 20% runoff, you know, and it, 
water too much if you have to you know if i can give it 20 liters man and it's all going to piss out the bottom but then you're going to get a decent yeah. idea of how much your plant's taking every day which you get all the water back say but you got 17 liters out of the 20 liters it means your plant's taking three liters so next time feed it five liters and then you're going yeah. to get three liters which the plant will absorb and then you get two liters coming back which is a good amount of runoff to have well, see, with cocoa, you have the advantage of being able to water whenever you feel like it as often as you feel like mm-hmm. it. Because you're not going to overwater your plants. So what I'll do in that, that catch situation on a three-gallon pot is I'll give it one liter in the morning and one liter in the mid- mid-afternoon. So split my waterings between two times, uses a little bit less water overall, and the plant's twice as happy because it's always mm-hmm. got nutrients. Mm-hmm. That's it, man. I mean, you get such a flexible media, you can almost make up your grow plan with it. Yeah. It is just a beautiful way to grow, man. It's so simple. Once you get your head around those those initial things, the numbers, the EC and the pH, and how much nutrients to put in, once you get your head around it, it's so fucking easy. And if your plant has any problems, like, oh, my God, that leaf's going a little bit yellow, you're going to know what to do, and it's going to be fixed in 24 hours, 48 hours at the most. It's going to be back to normal, back on schedule, doing its yeah. thing. And it's, it, it, you don't have the same privileges when you're growing in soil. It can take a few few days to figure out what the problem is and then treat it and make sure that the plant is back to normal so it can slow things down. But when you're in cocoa and it can get all those nutrients to straight into the root zone at the right levels and all that air going into the root zone as well, it, the plant's fucking happy as fuck. It's, you know, it'll just grow like a beast, man. And also, sometimes you'll see people add perlite to cocoa. That can I be do. done if you want to, but it, I don't find it to be necessary. Cocoa on its own has always got beautiful drainage. In my opinion, but some people do. They'd add like uh thirty percent. How much you add to your cocoa, monkey? I add thirty percent, but I mm. also reuse my cocoa. So I mm. think that when you reuse your cocoa, it does change consistency. It starts breaking down over time, mm-hmm. 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 and so I do believe the perlite, especially when you're reusing it, becomes more important. Mm-hmm. That's it. But just like uh, you just water more. That's all. It's gonna be so. It's simple. Growing cocoa is simple. You just have to have the balls to try it and then you'll do fine and it, it, i've grown the healthiest plants i've ever seen growing in cocoa you know and soil was easy too it's not like soil's difficult but growing in organics you just water a lot less man you spend a lot less time with the plants mm-hmm. uh, and don't don't be mistaken saying that, that you know you can't do organics with cocoa yes there are organic fertilizers that you can use in cocoa core Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I mean, bio business is a line that a lot of people at Percy's use that is an organic line and they grow in cocoa with it. Uh, other ones are out there too, as well. So you want you know, just to make sure we point out some things here, make sure that the cocoa stays wet. Don't let it dry out. You want between 10 and 20% of the water that you feed in when it's going into the plant, you want 10 or 20% to come out the bottom, the runoff. You don't ever just, water it so it's wet again make sure you're watching out the old salts through the bottom by making sure you have enough runoff and 10 10 to 20 percent is usually plenty to get the old salts out of it and when the runoff comes out the bottom of the pot don't let the pot just sit in the runoff get rid of it drain it away don't leave it sitting in the tray because the the soil will just uh, the cocoa will just absorb it again and that's going to leave you with ph and ec issues and the plant will suffer so get rid of any runoff that comes out the bottom of the pot straight away uh, you can use auto feeders if you want to. That's something some people do. They'll set up a bucket, which is mm-hmm. full of the nutrients, put an air stone in it, let it bubble away, and then just have an air pump, um, a nutrient pump, like a pond pump or something like that. That's it. And linked up to all the all the plants, and it will feed automatically on a timer. So that, that makes it even easier. You know, if you don't have the time to water your plants every day, you can set it up so a timer will water them every day for you instead. And that's pretty easy to do. And you can yeah. go and check all of this out on percysgrowroom.com while it's while it's still free to come and join us, remember. You can get over there, sign up for absolutely free. But and uh one more thing, man. Springtails. You see this a lot in cocoa. You you'll yeah. see these little white things which will come out in the medium, and it doesn't happen in every grow, but occasionally you will see it and you see people come up on the forum and be like, I've got bugs in my cocoa, what the mm-hmm. fuck is this? It's uh, yeah, it, it scared me the first time I saw them, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and they're always in my grow. I I use can of cocoa bricks, and I think that the eggs are in in the bricks, but it's okay, to, mm-hmm. because these are good bugs, absolutely good bugs. Yeah, they eat the dead, decaying uh, roots. They eat the uh, the the 
the cocoa peat that you want to get rid of, all that organic matter. So they're eating your garbage and they're pooping out good stuff for the plant to eat. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, if you, uh, for me at least, every time I pump out the runoff out of the tent, I just see this white dust floating on top of it. And mm -hmm. it just hundreds and hundreds of springtails on yeah, it thousands man loads but i remember when i first yeah. seen them and i freaked out like, what the fuck oh my god my plants are gonna die <laughs> yeah i've got a video on my youtube channel of them jumping jumping in in the runoff bucket mm -hmm, it's really mm -hmm. amazing when you first start seeing them what is that dust it, because it looks the way, reason you notice it is because all the dust is exactly the same shape and size and that's just not natural mm -hmm. and then you start looking at it, that dust is moving down there what is this stuff but yeah, it's not a bad thing. Uh, springtails look look for them. The little white looking, they got antennas on them, and what looks like a pincher on the front. But mm. they will not. They don't eat your plants. Uh, root zones look healthy as can be if if you check them when you have springtails. So don't be afraid of springtails. Um, bubble just like a benign insect kind of thing. Sorry, much. You said they're like a benign insect. That's what kind of. Yeah, they just. Insect, yeah, they just. Yeah. Uh, they just eat dead stuff. They won't eat your plant. They'll just eat dead stuff, shit it out, and put real nutrients huh. back in. People use them in uh, like aquariums sometimes, turtle tanks, things like that. You can use springtails to clean up algae and, and that kind of shit. They're pretty good, man. But they'll just appear in your cocoa sometimes, so don't get freaked out if you see that. Bubble Huck also said fungus gnats. You shouldn't see fungus gnats too much because the fungus gnats like to feed on woody stuff. Yeah, And I've had fungus gnats before from cocoa, but that's because I wasn't using the good shit. I used Plagoron. And they had big chunks of fucking wood in the cocoa. And that's what the fungus gnats like. They like to eat on the wood and stuff fungus grows on. But if you're mm -hmm. doing things properly and there's no big chunks of wood in your cocoa, you shouldn't see many fungus gnats. And if they do appear, they won't be along. They won't be there for very be long. Doing something, I must be doing something wrong then. Because before I, I started a few practices, I had fungus gnats all the time in my cocoa. Yeah. But, but you get now... big chunks in your cocoa, though. No, I didn't. But but the top of the top of the cocoa was always wet because it was hand watering, and so mm. in the top of top of any media that's wet like that, and it is a woody material, and, and the fungus snatched they thrived in the stuff. I mean, I, they, I was going crazy on my first grow or two before I discovered my ultimate solution. But you know, yeah, in the cocoa bags, they, yeah, they, they when it's stored badly, then they'll get in there. Yeah, I know. The only one time I ever had bugs when I was growing in cocoa is when I did that one time when I used playground and when it had the wood in and I got fungus gnats. But I went for years without seeing bugs in my grow tent when I was growing in cocoa. And even growing in soil, I don't see any bugs really. So, well, you know, I live in in, in a little bit more of a tropical style environment, mm -hmm. and, and these gnats are here all the time year round. So, I mean, all it takes is one or two of them, one pregnant gnat to get into your tent, and next thing you know, you got fungus gnats. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I'm sure they've flown into my tent before and I've not seen it, but there are ways of mitigating that with, with cocoa. You, you will see fungus gnats, but yeah, you can use things like mosquito dunks is one way. You can also use uh, beneficial nematodes uh, to, to uh, get rid of them. There's other, other things, but cocoa does have that. Just like soil, you're going to have fungus gnats. Yeah, man. Uh, you're just one of those things which you have to keep an eye out for. You know, bugs do arise in cocoa, but they are much easier to get rid of yeah um i've not had like i haven't had thrips set up shop in coco yet and i haven't had well not oh when... that's what i got that it wasn't fungus snats it was thrips in the praegon thing that's what i had fucking thrips man and they was a mm -hmm. bastard to get rid of they were god damn yeah yes. i always have thrips and gnats always our little bastards i just manage though so. yeah that, that's yeah. it you, you find the right they level they're mm -hmm. never overwhelming, but yeah, through like IPM and, and various methods, mm -hmm. compost tea sprays and things. Yeah, don't don't sense. expect to start up as, as an expert, but all these little tricks that we're talking about, yeah, as you get your media dialed in, you'll learn all about the little extras to get your fungus gnats under control. You'll do it your way, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what homegrown's all about. Do it the I'd, best I'd way for too, you. Like, unless you're like growing in a super sterile, like hydroponics, maybe, like true DWC type shit. Mm -hmm it's if you see a few bugs don't like lose your shit you know it's, no. it's pretty okay as long as you don't let do nothing about those bugs and mm -hmm. then let them flourish and then then you're fucked but you know don't like freak out because it's it's like the perfect environment for bugs to be honest especially in an indoor tent it's like the garden of eden if you was a you bug know, where would predators. you want to live no That's yeah, right. no <laughs> warm, yeah. all the food you want and no predators to, to bother you yeah 
Perfect. Mm -hmm. Let's eat some cannabis. But that's about, I mean, of course, that's not about it. This subject can go on for fucking ages and talk about cocoa for a long time. But that's that's pretty much everything you need to know to get your your cocoa grow started and uh, to the end successfully. It's really easy, man. And of course, if you need any help at all, you can find us over on postiesgrowing.com. We're always happy to help. And there's plenty of cocoa growers over there who are always happy to help as well. So you're not on your own. Try this shit out because the plants grow fast. They grow happy. They grow tasty. You know, it's some good shit, man. I've grown many, many cocoa plants that turned out to be fucking epic. Yeah, so Cocoa has the ability of really, uh, it, it, when done right and dialed in correctly, you can get really high yields in small mm, spaces with cocoa. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to get max yield out in, in small tents, might be worth a look. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, just don't don't have to think just, uh, oh, I'm not doing cocoa because it's salt and, and it's artificial. It doesn't have to be. I throw microbes in mine all the time. So, you know. And some people Mix use them up. grow dots as well, don't they? They were mentioned in the chat there. You can just put the grow dots in and it will release nutrients over time. As long as you keep the pH 5.8, everything should be yeah. fine. Yeah, show enough does over at Percy's does that. He's given out some good information on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if people want to know if you're having problems with grow dots, drop by Percy's and ask us. Mm 